if you have a sales page, but you're not getting the conversions that you would have hoped for, or you know, if you're simply looking for ways to exponentially increase your click-through rates, keep watching as I'm gonna give you 12 proven hacks to do so. Let's dive in. The first one is that strong verbs go a long way in call to actions. I think most solopreneurs get this one right these days, but if you're still that one person that is telling people in your landing pages to click here or you know visit this page, then then we need to talk. I mean, you need to be using strong verbs that convey a sense of urgency and push people to take action. You know, like download now, sign up today, explore the course. See how these verbs are specifically telling people what action they need to do. I'm not asking people to visit my sales page, I'm asking people to buy the course, even if it still first takes them to a sales page. Alongside using strong verbs, what you can try doing is highlighting the benefit that people are going to be able to enjoy within your call to action. And you know, this isn't always necessary. Um, I don't always do this myself either, but it can help in some instances. And I'll give you an example. Instead of having your call to action be simply, you know, download now, if we were talking about an app that you're building, you can have your call to action be download now and start creating today or download now and start building today. The third recommendation that I have for you is to, when possible, try to create a sense of scarcity. And this one goes hand by hand with the first one. Um, and it works really well, especially on landing pages. For example, if you're selling a course, uh, try putting a cap on the amount of people that you're going to allow to get enrolled in your course and show off on your sales page that there are only two spots left for people to use or three spots left for, for people to sign up to your course. Or if you're running a sale, you know, try showing off that the sale is going to end in 24 hours or 48 hours or that there's only two products left for people to purchase. The next one is super important, which is to use social proof. You know, you can show viewers that there have been other people that have already taken action before them and that they are extremely happy with the results. Or if you've been featured on reputable newspapers or magazines, you can include the logos from those somewhere around your call to action. You have to make your call to action stand out. And there are a few ways of doing this, but the easiest one is to make sure that the color of your call to action contrasts with the background color where it's, where it's sitting. You know, this will make it more likely to catch people's attention. And another way of making sure that your call to action stands out is to make sure you're making use of enough breathing room between your call to action and its you know, surrounding elements. Can you tell a difference between this and this? Do you see how the empty space around your call to action not only makes it stand out more, but it also makes your design look more clean and organized? The placement of your call to action matters as well. You need to have a call to action in your hero section. If you don't, you're forcing visitors to have to scroll in order to be able to find it. And that's just not very user intuitive. And having a call to action in the hero section should also help you really try to understand what the user journey looks like on your site. Ask yourself, what is it that you want visitors to do upon landing on your page? And make sure that the copy and the call to action on your hero section are aligned with what you're asking visitors to do. You know, make sure that they're aligned with what your overall goal and strategy is. Keep in mind that a lot of your traffic these days is going to come from a mobile device. And if you're building on WordPress, chances are that you're building on desktop first and then optimizing for mobile devices. And you know, this is why you should make sure that you're optimizing the design of your call to actions for mobile as well. For example, in many instances, the width of your buttons on desktop is going to be constrained but then those same buttons on mobile devices, not always, but in some cases may look better stretching them out to the full width of the screen. But that's just one example of how you just need to make sure that you're trying as hard as you can to optimize your call to actions on mobile. And you know, if you ever have any doubts, you can always just A-B test. The next one has nothing to do with the call to action itself, but you know, just make sure that your page loads fast. If it's taking five seconds for people to even see your call to action, then your biggest problem isn't even the call to action to begin with. There's a card popping up on screen right now uh, where I show you how to set up a caching service on your WordPress website. Just by doing something as simple as that can easily speed up your site. And at least you'll know that people are indeed seeing your call to action to begin with. You can also try incorporating interactive elements such as hover effects and animations. Check this out, for example. This is making use of Thrive Architect's text highlights effect, and it's a really catchy way of asking your visitors to focus their attention 
on this call to action. There's one more thing, and I'd like to go back to this idea of placing call to actions in the right places. Yes, you have to have call to actions in your hero section, and you know we've already addressed that, but you need to understand that it's not going to be the only call to action that you're going to need. You see, pretty much every section on your landing page needs to have a purpose, right? I mean, if it doesn't have a purpose, then it doesn't really need a place on your landing page. And that purpose needs to be supported by a call to action. For example, a benefit section that tells people and tries to convince people why they should pay for your product or service needs to have its own call to action that allows them to easily do just that. It doesn't make any sense for you to waste screen real estate and people's time telling them why they need to pay for your product or service if you're not going to offer them an easy way of doing so. I actually uploaded a video not too long ago where I broke down Ali Abdal's sales page and you know, one of the things that I could see him having a problem with is that even though he had a really strong sales page, he lacked call to actions throughout the whole thing. He barely had any of them. And this is bad. You want to make it super easy for people to take action. There will be a time where you're going to have implemented all of these hacks and you'll still want to see if you can optimize your call to actions for even more conversions. And this is why you need to test, test, and continue to test things. Test if there's a particular design that works best. You know, test whether the, you know, highlighting the benefit inside your call to action gets you more clicks. You can even test to see if something as simple as changing the color of your button gets you more click through rates. A-B testing never hurts. And whether you're looking to run some A-B tests, build your landing pages with a conversion focused mindset, or if you're simply looking to give your online business a complete revamp, Thrive Suite is the one and only suite of tools that you need to do so. There's a link in the description box that you can click on to learn more. For more web design tips and tricks, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and let me know down in the comment section if there are any other tips that you know of to boost call to action click through rates. I am absolutely keen to learn more. It's been a pleasure as usual and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.